For this experiment, we will be transforming chemically competent E. coli cells using PGFP, a plasmid that contains genes for ampicillin resistance and green fluorescent protein. Transformants will be selected for the presence of the plasmid using LB ampicillin plates. In addition, transformed bacteria will be examined for GFP expression with and without IPTG, isopropyl beta thiogalactopyranicide, to demonstrate the utility of inducible promoters. Collect a beaker of crushed ice from the common table and place one microcentrifuge tube of calcium chloride and one microcentrifuge tube of the plasmid into your container. It is important to keep the PGFP cold to keep the plasmid from denaturing. The calcium chloride is kept cold to force the E. coli cells into a cold, hot, cold heat shock, which in the presence of the calcium chloride will make the cells more permeable and enable them to take up the PGFP plasmid. We will be working with two different tubes. One microcentrifuge tube will contain the PGFP plasmid as a control, labeled plus DNA, and one tube does not contain the plasmid. This is labeled minus DNA, and this acts as our control sample. Using a sterile loop, transfer approximately five isolated colonies, these should be about 1 to 1.5 millimeters in diameter, from the E. coli source plate into the minus DNA tube. Agitate the loop to ensure all cells have been transferred. Vortex the tube gently until the liquid looks cloudy to resuspend the cells. Transfer 250 microliters of the cell suspension to the PGFP tube labeled plus DNA. Vortex slightly to mix. Transfer 10 microliters of PGFP DNA to the tube labeled plus DNA and gently flick the tube to mix. Do not add PGFP to the minus DNA tube. Next we will heat shock the cells. It is important to follow the identical procedure for both the control and the transform cells, even though the control is not going to be taking up a plasmid. This helps us confirm that our experimental procedure did not affect the organism in some way. Incubate both tubes on ice for 10 minutes. Following the 10 minutes, place the tubes in a 42 degrees Celsius heating block for exactly 45 seconds. Immediately return the tubes to the ice and incubate for two minutes. Next, we give the cells some nutrients and a comfortable temperature to help them recover from the heat shock. Transfer 250 microliters of recovery broth to each tube. Gently mix by flicking the tube. Incubate the cells for 10 minutes in a 37 degrees Celsius heating block. While the cells are recovering, label the bottom of four agar plates with the following. Take one plate with no stripe, that contains no ampicillin and no IPTG, only LB media, with the label minus DNA. Take two plates that contain LB media plus ampicillin and label one minus DNA plus ampicillin. And label the other plus DNA plus ampicillin. Take a fourth plate. This plate should have added ampicillin and added IPTG. This plate will have two stripes on the side and label it with the label plus DNA plus ampicillin plus IPTG. We expect us to have different results from each of these plates based on the additives that are present. After the 10 minute recovery period, remove the tubes from the heating block and place them in the tube rack. We will next plate the cells with the hope of isolating individual colonies for the next set of experiments. Transfer 250 microliters of recovered cells from the minus DNA tube to the center of the minus DNA and minus DNA plus ampicillin plates. Pour approximately 6 to 12 glass beads into the plate and agitate back and forth on the desktop to spread the cells evenly across the plate surface. Discard the beads in the waste bead container. Transfer 250 microliters of recovered cells from the plus DNA tube to the center of the plus DNA plus ampicillin and plus DNA, plus ampicillin, plus IPTG plates. Repeat the spread plating technique for these plates. Once the liquid has been absorbed by the agar, stack the plates and tape them together and label with your initials and the date. Then we place the plates in the warm room at 37 degrees Celsius overnight for approximately 16 to 18 hours. Hey, we hope you like this video. This is part of the series GFP production for my bioprocess engineering class. We'd like to acknowledge the K-12 
kit from Edbotech, number 303, Exploring Biotechnology with GFP that this work is based off is. Click the link to visit the kit.